Hey everybody, over the last few months I've been working on a video on the Cold Steel Sham Shear and the Cold Steel Talwar, which are both swords that have been called scimitars in the past, so I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about the word scimitar and also compare those two swords. But after a few hours of writing for that this weekend and after hours of cutting with them and recording footage, I realized I still had hours to go for video recording and video editing. But I've developed such a backlog on swords that I want to talk about that I decided it might be a good idea to do a few rapid fire one off videos on some swords that I don't have as much to talk about history wise on. And it's not to say that these swords don't have history in some cases like the one I'm going to talk about today. The historical sword that this sword is based on has so much history that it's almost impossible for me to even figure out where to begin. So I'm really going to kind of gloss over the history, probably won't even actually discuss history in this video, or even in the next couple of videos that I do, and just really focus on my experience so far with the swords. To that end today, I'll be talking about this Dao, so-called Oxtail Dao, made by Hanwei. What we have here is an overall length of 32 and a half inches, a blade length of 25 inches, and advertised weight of 1 pounds 13 ounces, and a blade made of 1566 high carbon steel. We have some brass accents, the brass on the guard, a brass pommel, which they advertise as being threaded, so I assume it's just threaded on here, um, and Hanwei has sort of a mixed reputation with their threaded pommels, but I cut pretty extensively with this and haven't had an issue with anything loosening up on it, and I haven't had to tighten it down. Everything looks like it's pretty well aligned. Additionally, it has this little bit of cloth fabric here tied to the end of the pommel. Now, this is pretty easily removable. You can just loosen it and pull it off, something that I might end up doing at some point because so far in my experience, it does get in the way, and I think it looks a little bit cheap as well. The first thing that I noticed about this sword is really how handy it feels. It moves quite well in the hand, and I think that that is owed to this very, I'm not going to say severe, but this very nice distal taper that runs from the guard to the point. So what you end up with is even though you have a very deep bellied, broad tip, it actually still feels really handy and really pretty light and balances well in the hand. So even for being nearly two pounds, it handles really, really nicely. We have a pretty attractive triple fuller on it, which also probably contributes to the feel and the handling on it. One thing I did notice is the grip, which appears to be wrapped around, it might be a genuine ray skin, it doesn't list in on the website uh, is got this cord that's braided around it uh, the grip is pretty round but it's very oval so edge alignment I didn't find to be very difficult but the grip is also really thick and I can imagine some people with smaller hands may have a hard time getting around that grip in fact the grip is generally pretty large which means i guess in a way it's also very forgiving as far as hand placement uh, but i almost think the grip feels a little bit on the big side as far as cutting performance goes i was really surprised and i don't know why but i was really surprised to see that this sword cuts extremely well it's very easy to cut to tommy to cut water bottles with it good the out of the box edge is one of the best that i have probably in my collection we have a very continuous grind from the primary bevel where the blade starts to angle down all the way to the edge. So I didn't have to do anything with this edge. Every, all of the cutting footage that you're seeing is the edge that it came with right out of the box. Probably the most appealing thing about this sword though is the price. I paid on Cult of Athena $199, so just under $200, really $200 if we're, we're going to be more accurate about it which for as well made and as well as the sword performed i think is worth every penny in fact i would go so far as to say that this is probably my favorite one-handed sword that i have in my collection so far and i don't have a ton of them i don't really have a lot of high-end swords yet either but this sword just performs really well it's really handy feeling 
and pretty light and lively in the hand. Not as much so as some others that I have. It's still got a, a pretty sizable, significant blade, but they've done such a good job at managing the weight and balance on it. As you can see, the balance is not too terribly far from the guard, maybe a little further than I would like, but they've done such a good job on balancing everything that it's, it's just really easy to use. It's a really forgiving cutter and I didn't notice any warps or bends in the blade at all. Everything is very straight. All the lines are very clean. And uh, I did hit the cutting stand a few times with it and take the corner off once and didn't have any issues with any kind of uh, edge deformation. And I didn't even really notice any dull dulling on it. I think it's probably, I'm sure it dulled from hitting wood, but I didn't really notice it. So uh, overall it's performed really well, especially in the price range. It also came with this wood scabbard that's got these brass accents on it and is really nicely smoothly polished. It looks a little bit like a kitchen table as far as the wood color and the uh, the polish goes, but it's nice looking overall. So really the only things that I would call out is this uh, kind of cheap looking piece of cloth which is easily replaced or removed altogether and the kind of large grip. Everything else though uh, I think is, is quite good on the sword. So yeah, if you're interested in checking it out, uh, $200 on Cult of Athena's website when they're in stock. As of today, they are not, but uh, they come back in regular, regularly. These swords have been around for a while and generally seem to have a pretty good reputation online already. So this is Jay. Hope you liked the video. Please click like if you did. Be sure to subscribe to me if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.